Takes the snap. Sets up. Sets up. Throws one over the knee. Intercepted. Marlon Jackson. Marlon's got it. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Dig this. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. But I'm about to go down. You're listening to the For the Culture Podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. Another low to no risk guy coming in for the Colts on a one year deal as Ballard's theme continues. Low to no risk, build up the roster, create a lot of competition at every position this time it's a one-year deal for wide receiver Kamar Aiken from the Baltimore Ravens Jason you want to start us off on Kamar yeah I I love this signing for a lot of different reasons obviously the competition angle was good as far as pushing Dorsett pushing Rodgers pushing even Moncrief this guy is is a legit 6'2 physical he's definitely different from any of the receivers that we have I like what he brings to the table. He's a good blocker downfield, but more than that, I think he can be a really big red zone target for Andrew Luck and, and, you know, pick up the, I guess, the the targets that that Allen would have had maybe. So I I like the signing. It it goes along with with kind of what he's done with every other position, which is to create competition, and that's that's how you build a team and that's how you get better. And with Moncrief, it gives you an option there if Moncrief goes down again, obviously with the injury problems over the last year or so. Now with Kamar Aiken, you have another six foot two guy that could slide in there and you still maintain size at that number two receiver spot. Yeah, and and, and honestly, Kamar Aiken's a much more physical receiver than, than Dante Moncrief is. He's not nearly as fast as Moncrief. But your point's well taken. It, and you already I have speed out there with T.Y. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you, I mean, but... I, it, it, it just gives you flexibility and the, the ability to, you know, if, if somebody goes down, whether that's Moncrief or, you know, God forbid, Hilton, you have that flexibility to, to put another guy out there with who not only is, is, is big and has a lot of really quality physical traits, but has, has played extensively and, and has experience playing and, and being productive, which is huge because, you know, sometimes you get guys that really haven't been productive and they're really, really low, low risk players, but their the production isn't there. This guy started in the NFL, played 14 games, uh, as you pointed out earlier. So the production, um, you know, that he he can bring is is big. But I also love the competition angle that you know he's going to push Dorsett, he's going to push these other guys to be better than they have been. Yeah, or push them right off the roster because everybody's first thought, and I don't care how you feel about Dorsett. You're lying to yourself if your first thought wasn't future of Philip Dorsett. Kamar Aiken, undrafted free agent back in 2011. Quan Bray, undrafted free agent. Chester Rogers, undrafted free agent. You got three undrafted free agents that, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure you feel the same way, are right now better receivers than Philip Dorsett. Guys that could beat him out in competition. Yeah, I would argue that. All three, all three of these guys are they're all more much more valuable than Philip Dorsett because they. Bray is a really, really excellent uh, special teams player as far as returns and and um, Chester Rogers as well. It's not not as I don't think he was as, as successful as Bray has been, but I think he can play special special teams as he did last year, and I think he can get better. And and Aiken has has played special teams and has experience doing it um, as a gunner and just playing on on special teams. So and and he was fine. He's good at it. So th- that gives to me that gives them. You know, a little bit of a. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're not going to keep uh, these guys unless they're productive as wide receivers. But I also think that that gives them an edge over Philip Dorsett because he does not do anything on special teams. Yeah, and they're more productive than him at the wide receiver position. And on top of it, right. they bring you value in other areas and other aspects of the game in the return game, helping you on special teams. We haven't got to the draft yet. I don't think. I think this Kamar Aiken pick kind of does eliminate any possibility of drafting a late round receiver. So I don't see us taking a receiver at all in this draft. But if we do take a late round, seventh round receiver, or we pick up an undrafted free agent wide receiver or two, there's going to be even more competition. And Philip Dorsett showed as a first round pick who continuously gets beat out by 2015 and 2016 undrafted free agents. This has happened now in back to back years with Bray and Rodgers. Why can't it happen again? There might be another receiver that goes undrafted this year that the Colts end up signing that also beats out Philip Dorsett over the summertime because 
We know Gritchen's not here. Gritchen doesn't have the pride in, I took this guy in the first round. I don't want to look like an idiot. I have to keep him around. I have to keep him on the roster. I can't go 0 for 3 in first round picks from 2013 to 2015. So we got to keep this guy in the field. We got to keep him as the third receiver. That's not here. There's nothing keeping Phil Dorsett at an automatic spot. Once competition begins, and Chris Ballard is very big on it, competition is going to take over. If Phil Dorsett goes out there and loses, which we kind of expect at this point, and also on top of all that, we would love to trade Philip Dorsett, but I don't think that's a possibility. I don't see anybody giving up anything of value. Now, I said the same thing about Dwayne Allen, and I was wrong, but with Philip Dorsett, you look at this guy. He's done nothing on the field. He can't help you pretty much in any aspect of the game. He's got bad hands. I don't think he wants the ball even thrown at him at the end of games. He can't feel the punt. He can't fair catch a punt, let alone actually be effective and return punts. So I don't see any value in Philip Dorsett as far as like a trade option goes. And also, every year, undrafted free agents are coming out and producing at a higher level than Dorsett. Why would anybody give up a pick to get basically an undrafted free agent that's a couple of years older than the guys they could just pick up on the undrafted free agent market? Yeah, I mean, I, I, agree, with you. Uh, I agree with that assessment, although I would still try to maybe get a sixth or a seventh. Of course you're going to try, him. of course. Of course you have to try. It's yeah, just that um, I don't see anybody saying, oh, look, Philip Dorsett, we could get him for a seventh. What a steal. Let's, let's pull the trigger. I just don't see that. Right. Well, the bottom line for me is is, is lack of production. And, and I, for me, I, I think if you put, you know, Chester Rogers and give him the snaps that Philip Dorsett had last year or Quan Bray or Kamar Aiken or whatever, even though Kamar Aiken wasn't on the team last year, I think if you put the, the other two that I mentioned in – Philip Dorsett's spot, I think your production that you get from those two guys far outweighs what you got from Philip Dorsett because really the only thing Philip Dorsett is good at is drawing pass interference penalties. He doesn't catch he doesn't go up and catch balls in the traffic. He doesn't break plays, you know, have long runs and uh, he just doesn't do anything well. Philip so, Dorsett has made I one mean, meaningful impact play in two seasons in the NFL. One play, week three of 2015. That's the only impact play he's ever made. I know he's had one or two other broken coverage plays where he, you know he's had big plays and blowout games that didn't mean anything. But the guy's made one impact play in two seasons. Yeah, it's and it's a first round. I mean, it's just we just it's a Gritchen didn't miss. even talk to Landon Collins. He didn't even have Landon Collins as an option at 29, and he drafts Philip Dorsett, a projected third, fourth, fifth round wide receiver. Give me a break. Give me, I just, by far the worst in-moment decision Gridgen's ever made was drafting Philip Dorsett. Yeah, I would argue Bjorn Werner's pretty bad, but. In-moment, though, in-moment. Philip Dorsett, wide receiver was the last thing we needed. You already had, you signed Andre Johnson, three years, 21 million. You obviously <coughs> thought Andre Johnson was going to turn out. You go to the CFL, you get the wrong Carter. You already have T.Y., you already have Moncrief. Getting a receiver in the first round, it was just so beyond stupid. Even if Philip Dorsett worked out, I thought it was a stupid move. Let and then obviously yeah, it's it was, turned it into a dumb. complete bust. I mean, there's no there's no arguing that was just flat out dumb. <laughs>